Hi guys, welcome back. Today, we are going to be talking about the Dark Elves. And I'm sorry if the things sound a little different in the background. Um, unfortunately, I had some trouble with a new motherboard that I bought. Um, so, I am currently using a laptop to record this, um, so none of my preferences are currently enabled, um, and the setup is not quite ideal, so I hope you enjoy it anyways, um, recorded here in, in the, the scattered remains of what should be my desktop. But anyways, today we're going to be talking about the Lords of Nagaroth. In the chill land of Nagaroth lies a realm steeped in malice. This is the home of the Dark Elves, the outcast children of Ulthuan. They watch the world with malevolent eyes, knowing it is their birthright to rule and the destiny of others to serve if they are permitted to survive at all. Yet the Dark Elves know that they cannot claim their glorious inheritance whilst the hated High Elves endure. They are two halves of a race sundered long ago, separated by the greatest betrayal ever to occur in all the ages of the world. Even should every other land bow to their rule, the Nagarothi will not rest until they have brought ruin to Ulthuan, toppled its temples, and driven the High Elves into the sea. On that day, the Witch King of Nagaroth will finally claim a throne long denied him, and the rule of the Dark Elves will spread to every corner of the world. Dark Elves. The history of the Dark Elves is one of betrayal, of birthrights denied, and retribution long overdue. The future they desire is one of glorious dominion, where the gleaming spires of their hated enemies are cast down, and the rule of their immortal witch king Malekith reaches every corner of the globe. Once, the elven peoples were united in common cause, battling as one against the perils of chaos. Those who would one day become the Dark Elves fought in the forefront of this terrible war, spilling their blood to protect the land of Ulthuan and the lives of their kin. This they did unflinchingly and without fear, for they reveled in the boundless joy of battle. Where many elves were soldiers, defending their lands and loved ones, these were killers who delighted in the many ways of death. Such ferocity soon came to be regarded with distaste. Thus, when the threat of chaos receded, those very elves who had driven it thence were played false by their peers and cast from their ancestral home. A lesser people would have been forever broken by this betrayal, but the Dark Elves were determined to thrive. From the chill land of Nagaroth, they have watched the world with opportunistic eyes, ever alert for a chance to reclaim their rightful station. In that bleak realm, the Dark Elves found a home as unforgiving as themselves a fit sight from which to plan a deserved vengeance. Thus do the dread hosts of Nagaroth spread across the world, their fell banners dancing grimly on the wind, each warrior alert to the prospect of wicked joy that every battle brings. 
from ranks of spearmen advance remorselessly across the field, a shadow of death that consumes all who stand in its path. Black-arc corsairs, given monstrous aspect by their scaled cloaks, hack through the foe, each chill-hearted pirate determined that his blade work and cunning will outdo that of his fellows. War hydras thunder into the fray, trampling those who stand their ground, belching forth dark flame to consume those who flee. Cold one nights strike home in a blur of steel and claw, the cold skill of the riders matched only by the savagery of their steeds. Sorceresses unleash their dark and forbidden magic, stripping flesh from bone and soul from body. Blood-drenched witch elves dance amongst the carnage, slashing with frenzied abandon at any who come within reach. Directing every assault are the black-hearted dreadlords of Nagaroth, who expend the lives of their followers as easily and with as little compassion as they order the destruction of the foe. The Elven Races The Dark Elves, or the Druki as they account themselves, are not the only Elven race to walk the world. They are but one of three great civilizations to have sprung from Ulthuan's cradle, though they dismiss the others as sniveling and ifit weaklings, unfit to inherit the legacies of ancient times. East of Nagaroth, still rooted to the fractured land of Ulthuan, dwell the High Elves, the Asur, between these two realms there can never be peace, for the betrayals of old were but the opening volleys in a close-fought and bitter war that has only escalated as the millennia have flowed past. Whilst the Dark Elves' aim is to rule the world, they at least make their ambition plain. Not so the High Elves, who seek control under the guise of protection and care not what consequence this might have on other lands. Further eastward still, upon a continent infested with humans and other barbaric primitives, lies Athel Lorin, the realm of the Wood Elves, the Azurai. The Wood Elves are held in contempt by both the Dark Elves and the High Elves, for they seek neither to rule nor control only to endure. No matter their allegiance, all elves are long-lived to the point of immortality, possessed of a self-assurance that falls little short of otherworldliness. They are swift of both body and reflex, capable of an effortless grace that shames the most elegant of men. Though all elves can broadly be accounted equal, the Dark Elves deem that only they make full use of their natural gifts, for they alone of elven kind do not allow such concepts as mercy and tradition to shackle their deeds. Elves are cunning of mind and clever beyond the ken of lesser mortals. Their every word conceals a depth of meaning that is altered wholly by the slightest change of inflection or stance. Dark elves, in particular, are adept at the art of twisting speech to serve their cause, and can gleefully manipulate the emotions of another to whatever end best suits their own interests. Thus do the Nagarothi make and break alliances in a careless fashion, knowing that their silver tongues can always be counted upon to heal the wounds of the past. It is this, more than anything else, which renders Dark Elf society so opportunistic and impetuous. When the deeds of old can be erased by a cleverly spoken word, what need is there for integrity and law? 
and though a dark elf's a swiftness of mind and deftness of body serve him well individually, it is the combination of the two that grants him such murderous prowess in battle. Every detail of an opponent's poise and stance speaks volumes to an attentive elf, telling him not only where and when the enemy intends to strike, but also the manner in which the act of attacking will weaken the foe's guard. Thus, as many an enemy died midway through a blow he thought fit to end the battle, his life was stolen by an impossibly swift blade, guided by a quicksilver mind. The Touch of Chaos Chaos has left its mark upon the elves, just as it has on almost all the races of the world. In this race, however, the power of the dark gods has taken a subtle form. It has fanned the arrogance of the elven soul, reinforcing all that is prideful and hubristic. Long ago, compassion could have been said to be the elves' defining trait, for such was the nature granted them by the old ones. But now, generosity has been eclipsed by narcissism, empathy by conceit. However, chaos has not changed all the elves in equal manner. The wood elves it has made isolationist, deniers of the wider world, who blindly hope that, so long as their realm knows order, no danger can threaten it. The high elves become ever more stubborn, having gained certainty beyond words' ability to convey that they, and they alone, can shield the world against the perils it faces. For the dark elves, however, chaos has brought enlightenment, the knowledge that the world exists only for the pleasure of the strong. They have embraced this revelation with a burning passion that shames the cold hearts of their ancient cousins. Indeed, it may yet set the very world afire. The Reign of Darkness For the, for the Dark Elves, excuse me. <laughs> for the Dark Elves, all the world's bounty is theirs to do with as they wish provided that they have the strength to claim it. They have turned aside from the benevolent gods of their pantheon, flocking instead to the worship of their more capricious and cruel deities, in particular Cain, lord of murder. It is a match well made, for the dark elves care nothing for the sanctity of life and consider the lesser races to be nothing more than insects begging to be ground beneath a boot heel if no more productive or entertaining use can be found for them. Naturally, the dark elves consider all other races inferior. Even those who approach them in skill and intellect, the Nagarathi dismiss as weaklings, sneering at the laws and traditions that waste resources nurturing the weak, even as they shackle the ambitious, the ambitions of the strong. The Dark Elves have no such restraint. In Nagaroth, the weak perish, and the strong take whatever they desire. None of this is to say that the Dark Elves wish to see all other races exterminated out of hand. So long as mines must be worked, farms must be tended, fortresses must be raised, and ritual sacrifices are required to win the favor of the gods, there will always be a place for primitives in the realm of Nagaroth. Indeed, some of the more capable barbarians can even be wielded as weapons in their own right, manipulated by threats, trinkets, and empty promises into assailing the shores of hated Ulthuan, or else wreaking havoc upon the high seas. Only the high elves have no hope of survival under the yoke of Nagarothi rule. For 
every dark elf dreams of the day when their ancient enemies will at last be scoured from every corner of the world. None consider the possibility that when the last high elf dies screaming in agony upon Cain's altar, the ultimate victory might leave a void of purpose that is impossible to fill. On that day, the Dark Elves will learn just how much of their souls have been devoured by their ancient hatred, and they may not find the tally to their liking. Until that day finally dawns, the Dark Elves will continue their bloody quest as they always have. Great raiding fleets, their sails black against the night sky, bring woe and destruction to all the shores of the world, bearing terror and death to distant realms, often for no better reason than because there is no one who can stand against them. With every year that passes, the power of Nagaroth ascends to greater heights, built upon the backs of slaves and fueled by a constant stream of plunder from far-off lands. As the older, as the other elder races fade, the Dark Elves thrive, knowing that their hour has at last come. Storm clouds gather across the High Elf realms, and the Witch King's malevolent laughter echoes upon the wind. Nagaroth will rise, Ulthuan will fall, and a vengeance thousands of years in the making will finally see its bloody conclusion. And with that, I think this video will also come to a slightly less bloody conclusion. I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is probably going to be one of the shorter ones in the Dark Elf series. That was just too good an ending to pass up. Um, I'm sorry for the uh, longer than usual time between videos. I'm, it seems like I've been saying that a lot recently, but I'll try to not let it go 10 days next time. Um, yeah. I'm glad to be talking about fantasy again, and I hope you guys are too. hope you're glad that I'm talking about fantasy again. Um, I've been looking at it, and this is, I believe, the last uh, faction to cover. Um, at least the last of the contemporary factions to cover. Um, so I've been thinking, possibly, maybe, we will look at some of the expansion storylines, although those are fairly long. So, we shall see. Keep that in mind. Let me know um, if you for sure want me to cover uh, end times or uh, whatever the other ones are called um, or if you really are not interested because obviously there is a lot of 40k stuff to talk about um, so yeah I'll stop blathering on and I will see you guys next time bye bye